Yo, what up? It's your boy Drew. Checking out that Drew World Order live. It's Sunday night, the 18th. Christmas is coming. If you're good, it's almost our boy's birthday here. I was going to go live on the backup channel. I kind of advertised it earlier. And I want to do a whole completely different type of show on the backup channel. I think I need a little more time, another week or two. Maybe I'll save that for the new year or something because i was i would spend almost all day kind of working on some other stuff for that and i didn't get nearly as far as i wanted to so we'll do it here for tonight please add the backup channel it's called get chalked up and maybe in two weeks or whatever we'll start a different sunday night show on the backup channel one second here. I'm going to post the link. Working on some other stuff. Uh, I'm going to post the link in here for you guys if you guys want to. Anybody wants to call in tonight using the Google Meet app, I think you can just do it in your, if you have the Google Gmail app on the bottom of that app, you should be able to just click that link and get in there, hopefully. Can any can everyone hear me? <laughs> I don't see any chatters, man. But I'm doing this a different way than I normally do it, so I'm just gonna keep going. Oh, I got my glasses on looking weird underneath these fake glasses. Okay, let's uh give me one second here. If anyone wants to call, hit that link. But in the meantime, uh let me share my screen with you guys. One moment here. There we go. Okay, you guys can hear me. Let me share my screen. Sorry, I'm doing this this different way so you guys can call in. It's kind of, I'm not as efficient this way. Hmm, I don't know the way to, where I should do this here. One second, let me. Apologize, man. This way. Last time I did it with the phone, so you guys could call in. And there was people saying they had a hard time. They weren't able to, like, join in on that way. So that's why I was trying to do it a different way this time, in case those people wanted to try to. Yeah, I don't know how to do what I'm trying to do here. Maybe this is what I do. I have to watch it on the phone. So while we're waiting for some calls, I did post a thing in the community tab earlier. Because I've been noticing a lot. I'm pretty sick of talking about it myself and going into the new year. I'll pretty much be done with it. But I posted the, you wanted me to roast these guys again. In 57%, it was 138 votes. So almost half of you didn't want it, but... This is how it goes in a democracy, right? 57% of you. So I'm going to just go through some of these. Uh, I've been saving some of the most unhinged screenshots of these errants. <laughs> I mean, and really, they're the ones I have are nothing compared to some of them, I guess. But we'll just go through that, I guess, while we're waiting for people to call. And if you don't want to hear that, then call in. This is the type of comment I get under these videos all the time. These are the these are the fans of you know who. Uh, this person says honestly, he's correct. The fact that people are lynching him makes me more interested in what he has to say. Then I go and listen to what he has to say, and it's mind blowing, fascinating stuff. I think that's a lot of what it's based on. It blows their mind, and they think there's no way it can't blow anyone else's mind. <laughs> it's not blowing my mind. I'm sorry. Um, I shared that link where he wrote that 5,000 days without a penthouse <laughs> with this lady and she said explain how this has anything to do with his ability to research or present information so she says explain it 
they're not even they're the drip feed truthers they want it in the feed they want they don't want a, any gray area of how to interpret it they want you to tell them how to feel about it and then i told her you know well basically he's caught in a lie and everything and then she goes to uh so anyone who looks at porn is a sexual deviant and anything they do is bad and should be canceled <laughs> I never said any of that in the the video I made. I said he was tortured and his basic human rights were taken away. So she straw mans an argument. She says, also, why do you care if he lies about having internet access or anything at all for that matter? So why don't you care that he lies is what I would say to that. She says, I think there are many more extremely more dangerous liars out there that are running political cults that are literally killing people that you could choose to focus your energy on but you pick this person for a reason obviously it's not your job to shape what people believe either that's definitely cultish behavior we see in others what we see in ourselves what you dislike in another is also in you no <laughs> she says these are basic self-awareness truths no i can judge a sex offender and just want nothing to do with that without seeing that in me. I'm not a sex offender. What's up, Smiley? Hit that link, Smiley. Got another one here. Oh, man. Uh, maybe I got to wait on that one. That one's just so long. You know, they're all long, I guess. So I might as well just get it over with. um this person was on another channel here talking about it and they said uh and if you if you don't want me going in on these guys you got to call in that's the only way it stops it says someone who made a mistake when they were young troubled 17 year old then never committed another offense really then he paid his debt to society and has not committed any other crime there is redemption and healing which is what jason has done you cannot consider someone a nasty rapist that never reoffended. <laughs> when see when I read this shit, this is why I don't want to talk about this anymore. And I'd I'd like to move on, but these people continuously come at me, and 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 I see it everywhere I go. No matter what videos I'm watching, there's some kind of comments about this in this community or whatever. These people, and they're nuts. Who says something like that? You can't call them a rapist if they never reoffend. A nasty rapist is someone who has a lifetime of offenses and never stopped that behavior because that is what they are. She's responding to someone else, too. I never called them that here. I don't know who she's fighting with, but. You you mentioned Jesus in your post, wasn't it? Jesus that taught about forgiveness and love. Oh, and judge not lest ye be judged. Not only are you judging Jason, but everyone here who appreciates Jason's work. I, for me personally, it's more about the people that talk about it and the people that are out here, these old ladies and stuff that leave posts like this. He has the right to say whatever he wants. It's up to you to double check it and verify it. You have a right to your opinion, but so does everyone else. If you don't like his work, you need to judge and need to judge other people. You do not know. Maybe you can go somewhere you feel more comfortable and stop being nasty to folks you do not know. Take the plank out of your own eye before you try to remove a splinter from someone else's is a good place to start. So they always quote the Bible, the same people that seem to hate the Bible. They'll straw man that you believe in the Bible. I don't know who she's responding to, and maybe they do. But then they'll like start quoting the Bible, even though they don't believe in it. That was, a, that was nuts. And that person came back again. Um, wait, can you guys not see this? Oh, man. See, I don't like this. Uh, hold on. I got to do all this again, I guess. I thought you guys could see these screenshots I've been sharing. Oh, I guess you could. Never mind. <laughs> I'm I'm ruining it, man.
Sorry. Now, this is the same person here talking about this. Uh, someone's calling. How do I? <laughs> Sorry, I'm really bad at this. Got Smiley. Let's see if we can connect with with our boy Smiley here. Yo, what's up, Smiley? You're muted right now. Be Smiley 3, everyone. You're muted, bro. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I think he hung up. Hopefully he can call back. He had a problem calling in last week, too. There we go. Okay, am I muted? You still nope. muted? Nope, I can hear you loud and clear. All right, cool, man. I don't really like doing this kind of stuff, man, like streaming and all that, but I've been, I was fascinated by this shit, man. Which, the, these people? Yeah, this whole thing. He's building a straight, he's straight up building a cult, man. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, there's these no other way to fucking, say it. These, what? Go ahead. These fucking people are bad. Dude, I'm, I, I've been around the truth or shit for a long time, too, man. Like, I've, I've gotten in some bat bat shit crazy shit, but these people are bat shit crazy, man. Oh, bro, they're like a whole new level of nutty. They're saying, did that, did that, did that comment say he can't be a rapist because he didn't reoffend? Yeah, and it gets worse if you uh, give me one second here. Let me read when she comes back. Oh, Let me read God. what she says. It's so long. I'm not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> she says. uh, Listen to this. This is the same lady. She says, when someone commits a crime of rape, they are a rapist at that time. But if they never commit another rape their entire life, then pay the debt to society and heal themselves, they would not be a rapist. Another example is if someone steals a car, they're a thief. If they're charged for that crime and they pay back what they took and the debt to society and they go back, they're no longer a thief. So basically, you're only a rapist while you're in the middle of the act. And after that, I guess if you feel bad, then you're not or something. Well, hey, 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 the, the law seems to think differently because having to register every year, uh, register yearly, you have to do that for a reason. If, if we were to forget well, about these kinds of things, that kind of, that kind of registration wouldn't fucking exist. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, I they can't. Have to they have to register every year for a reason. I agree. So, I, mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It's they're they're apologists. It's it's insane, man. Like rape apologists. That's a thing too. This guy, man. Like I can't the the I cannot say he's he's retarded or dumb. This guy's brilliant, man. Like. Oh, he put together he put together a pretty good little thing here. Absolutely, dude. I'm gonna bring Austin in here from in a year with books too, if he can join. But that's what uh that's what a con man is short for, right? A confidence man. It's it's well put together. It's not just like he's just throwing shit to a wall and hoping with it, whatever sticks. It was formed like mass. It it fucking weaves everything together, man. Even the Anunnaki shit, the 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 Star Child fucking Pleiadian shit. Like he's it's all intertwined into this somehow, some way. And he has like a new theory to pull these people in from all these different areas. It's it's pretty intricate shit. It's it's weird, man. Yeah, it's have you ever went and looked at the the Nephilim archives website on no. the website? Yeah, you no, can I haven't checked that out. You can see back then before he incorporated like everything like there was much many many things incorporated into the theory but then it seemed like maybe he took a little time off and and then mm -hmm. brought everything into the theory and then rebranded as a archaics channel what's up austin yeah. hey how you guys doing good what's up man hey hello b smiley nice to meet you fellas yeah it's nice to meet you too I, I I I'm kind of I don't like doing these kind of things because I'm kind of I, I I sound kind of ghetto man I'm kind of retarded myself but you well you can, I think I think we're all a little retarded probably uh, right. <laughs> you that's can all right this grift then you're good 
Oh, bro. But I think it's, I probably would have fell for it a long time ago, maybe 10 that's years probably. ago. But I totally would but have. I, but I don't think I could have be an apologist for like uh, uh, an offender like that, man. I, that's the I don't hate the, I don't, I don't hate the guy. I, I, you know, I think he's brilliant. He may be on the right path, but he, it looks like he's building a cult. He's lying. We've caught him lying multiple times. He contradicts himself every fucking time he talks. Right. Well, yeah, when you have everything so, in your theory, that's what's going to happen. Oh, it's not going to hold up like uh, uh, to a bit to big time scrutiny. I hope some of the bigger channels, you know, like fucking start fucking breaking his shit down because this is too much for me. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. To me, it's the people you read the comments everywhere. It's just that's what's gotten to me. Oh, man, that's the whoop. These people are the worst, dude. <laughs> they're pretty bad, dude. They're, they're baby truthers on crack, man. Oh man, it's the whole new wave. Well, in the video that uh, I wanted to talk about and I haven't seen mentioned much is this Haunted Life of a Dark Prophet, I believe is the title, where yep. he tells this really peculiar story about being 15 years old and driving somewhere in Oklahoma. And he's being, and he, it's kind of like a odd uh, industrial military like neighborhood. And he talked, uh, yeah, yeah. And he's like 15 years old. Like, what 15 year old is just randomly driving in Oklahoma for no reason? And then he goes on to say he's being trailed by like a police officer, security guard, or something. He makes a bunch of turns, comes to this cul de sac, and just as he's about to be pulled over, he says uh, a guy waves him in to his house, into his driveway. Then he says he goes into the house and relates what happens in there. But the most disturbing part is he says there's a comatose, passed out woman who never moves and doesn't say anything the whole time he's there. Then he goes on to say that this man and he makes this note, which I think is weird. He says this man asked to pray over him, not to join him in prayer. And so the man prays over him and he's like, oh, this is weird. But then suddenly I felt okay about it. He stays at the man's house and then says he wakes up the next day and the guy gives him a bag full of food and a bunch of money. And it's yeah. like, what in the That's hell true. are you talking about? No more mention of the comatose woman, what happened to her or anything. That's it's a pretty very odd story. Uh, to me, I kind of speculate. I don't know if it's true or not, but to me, it sounds like something from a movie but maybe since he hasn't watched so many movies he was locked up maybe it's something from a book like an old obscure book or something maybe maybe it really happened i don't know it sounds nuts and he's saying like where he's driving it's basically become some military thing or something where there's giant numbers on the ground that only a helicopter could see and stuff and then police are tailing him and then he just keeps turning and turning and ends up in a cul-de-sac and just parks at a house because now he's out of room to go so he doesn't know what else to do parks in a random driveway and then that's the guy you're talking about the guy waves him yeah. in waves, waves security off and but the comatose woman like who admits that and that's a pretty like messed up thing if i if i could went into a man's house and there was just a woman totally passed out there like i would be <laughs> calling the police right that's, that's true you would be calling an ambulance or something but and then he also seems to link this up with some epiphany that he had like this was his moment when all this started turning in his head and if we really wanted to put on our uh you know our tinfoil hats here and wanted to examine the whole picture of who that dude is i mean it starts to look pretty ugly to me and again i don't want to you know um I don't want to indict him, uh, but I mean, these are things he said. And so it starts to, you know, it has whiffs of some other stuff, even his cover story for what happened in that. Like, like, why would he go to the police with this girl? That whole idea of his cover story on why he was initially arrested doesn't really make sense. And then his time in prison, why was he there so long? And then I've also seen you recently post that thing about his uh, sex offender registry, and he's listed <laughs> as a moderate threat. And I don't know exactly how they calculate that, but you would think there'd be like a low, moderate, and high. 
Yeah. So that's what, exactly what, how it goes. It's like <laughs> one, two, or three in Texas. So why was he a a moderate threat? What it what, what in his past still has him? You know, he just gives off really weird vibes that I think well, he 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 told that story. He told that story of that old book. He was he was in a he was on one of the floors, whatever, cleaning. And and he saw an old book that one about a prisoner in a cell had a had was holding up a coffee cup or some shit, and he told that story a couple different times. And and one story he said that he traded that prisoner uh, uh, soups for that book, and then another time he said he brought him a whole bunch of food, and it was just a whole. It just it's just none of his stories are fucking. They're never fucking. They're just yeah. They're just flat and I. I've listened to so it's hard to keep up with this shit because I've listened to so much of it and there's so much of it. And I can't just remember what stream I've heard. You know what I mean? But there's a lot. You, you can hear these contradictions all the time. It's fucking it's not good. And people are just loving it. I mean, he's yeah. just blowing up. I mean, he does like what, when does he hit the ceiling of his bullshit? Yeah, do you think it's soon or do you think he's got like I mean you think he's only like halfway there or something maybe? I have no idea. It's hard to I say. I mean it's pretty thin. It's pretty thin stuff. That's what I can't ever understand the actual theory. Well, I don't understand why people are thinking it's the most genius shit ever. I really don't understand. They're completely like dazzled by the bullshit of it, like the just the ability of him to just rapid fire all this out and everything, and then if they come to my channel. That's why I wanted to read some of those comments tonight and the things they say. It's just word for word, like copy pastas. Of, they all say the same thing. You're jealous. You're not smart enough to understand what he's saying. Um, you're attacking oh, the man. You're not attacking his message. That what was do you bring to the table? That was the other super shady thing in that video is uh, he says when he gets out of prison, he gets like a motorcycle and this super expensive car from his family. But then that contradicts the story that he doesn't, was that his adoptive family or the family that gave him up? And then he goes on to start a number of businesses that don't really make sense. We got video of him saying he's gotten paid by intelligence agencies. So it's like, how much more do you need to start <laughs> saying like, is this guy an agent of some sort or a plant? And I don't want to get too conspiratorial, but if you look into like a, a character, uh, uh, there was this kid in Iowa who was named Johnny Gosh, who was kidnapped uh, uh, basically in the neighborhood I grew up in. And he, every year we hear about Johnny Gosh, but his mom ended up writing a story called What Happened to Johnny Gosh? And it was alleged that Johnny Gosh became this presidential aide, media aide ne named Jeff Gannon. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. And Jeff Gannon was wrapped up in some weird sex uh, stuff as well. And again, it's conspiratorial and speculative, but all everyone else is speculating. But he starts to kind of fit that mold in his portrayal and some of his stories and the weirdness and the weird stuff you put out about from that forum that he's saying, I mean, there's, there's weird sex elements to it and all this. And it starts, he starts looking like that. And that's something I've been discussing on my channel is just how these platforms themselves are sort of a decentralized cult programming in themselves. And so instead of having one small little cult, like they had in the sixties and seventies, these actual platforms and people on these platforms knowingly or not are engaged in the same practices that cults are and you see that with archaics big time because remember his whole deal was all the information was going to be for free and then people started really digging into the information and now it's all behind a paywall so he's created this multi-level marketing uh program to you know rake in the dollars essentially right and, and then what up. else you talked about that links it to similar to cult behavior is like the re rebranding and rewording of everything so nibiru is now nemesis x object exactly. uh chronic chronic con or whatever right that's it's a chronology yeah yeah it's a chronology and all the errant, different that is own the idea of an errant you know this special name 
an in-group, out-group, right? No one can disagree with him or you're pushed out. And they, I mean, I've seen them, I, I don't know if I had that uh, comment up tonight, but I've definitely seen that one Phoenix Protocol guy. You had to run in with him, I think. But I, I saw him describe the Mandela effect, and he said what it is, it's like edits in the past, because that's what Jason says. But he said it's it's only to distract us because we are the elect. So the reason that the computer's changing the thing is to distract the elect, the, who are the errants, apparently. And my wife talks about all the time that it's basically just a genocide cult. They want you genocided if you don't believe what it is. And that's what the Phoenix is, the safe space 2040, where anyone that doesn't think like them will be wiped out. Well, that, that stream he did responding after, after Owen Benjamin did his thing, he was directing like, he, he was just coaching his fucking cult and that's exactly what the thing is because he says he doesn't believe in a soul trap theory but then he goes on to say that unless you're vibrating on the level of an errant you guys are vibrating high you you're the the people who aren't vibrating high like the errants are going to get stuck here and have to reset and restart all over again wait that's a soul trap what the fuck is he talking about that's literally that's, the soul trap theory that's percent yeah exactly. Just with different words, though. Just like I said, he rebrands it with his own wording. So it's a doomsday cult because either you're an errant and you're on his on his team looking up to him as a prophet, or you're going to be fucking apocalypsed and doomsday and deluged. And they call him a prophet in the chat, and they he calls himself the dark himself, prophet. Yeah, he calls himself like Dark Socrates. He has all these crazy names for himself. Honestly, in part, part, like part of me, I just really don't care, man. Like, if he wants to build a cult, like, and do it, like, make money, like, I actually don't care. I'm, I just find this shit interesting, and it's fun pointing this shit out because it's bullshit. Hundred percent. That's where I'm at with it too. Like, I really don't care, but I talk about it. Here's my whole thing: is this, and I think some of the people that his fans or whatever don't get this about me is, even if he wasn't a sex offender, didn't have those sex crimes or whatever. If, the, if everything else was the same, I'd still be coming at it because it's it's pure bullshit. It's unbelievable bullshit. So I'd still be, but then I also like watching those like predator catcher channels and everything. And I hate predators. So it's kind of like a two in one for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's where I'm at. So I didn't even really know he was on the, he was a registered offender for like the, for a while. When I first, I, I kind of ran into him around the same time you guys did. Cause he was talking about the simulation, all this shit. He ended up in my algorithm and, just something wasn't right, man. Yeah, there's something definitely not right. And I think there's something not right in a lot of the most popular conspiracy channels that are going on now. This is what we discussed in our first interview. Uh, but like this idea of all the melted buildings, like the Grand Canyon is actually a massive complex of melted buildings. I mean, this is batshit crazy stuff and people really are humoring <laughs> yeah. it. As if it's, you know, the truth. They're, be they're bewildered by bricks. The bricks thing is that, for some reason, the mis the fucking the bewilderment of people in the Tartaria place about bricks just drives me nuts. Like, I I've seen these people say, oh, how did they how did they make all those bricks for these buildings? And, and they only had a population of 4,000. Bro, we've been making, humans have been making bricks for almost as long as we've been fucking banging rocks against each other. It's, I don't understand what the fuck. I don't understand it, man. Bricks big, are not, they're is, not rocket science. I think the people have not, not just the conspiracy people, but just most people in general nowadays have like no skills, right? You're so busy when you go from school and then you go right into a career and you're working 40 hours a, a day or a week. Oh, hopefully. Week. Yeah, hopefully, right? <laughs> You're not just sitting in a room watching YouTube videos. Yeah, hope hopefully, but it seems like yeah, they're super bewildered by that stuff. And then and then it's because it's fantastical, people want everything that's fantastical. So when there's a channel called Sacred Geometry Decoded and he's able to show like basic stone mace. He show you video today of people using just like basic tools splitting these gigantic rocks and doing everything that these people say they can't do yeah but i love that, channel, that dude that yeah, that not, channel that channel fucking rules yeah but these people want to hear like a, a fantasy they want to hear some crazy stuff 
They, well, like, then, they like, com com computers and shit to build to cut stone and shit, you know. And it is an interesting kind of thought experiment, and like you're showing with the comment. So you've discredited his person by showing that he has this egregious criminal history. He's a literal sex offender on the sex offender registry. You you lay out that you know it's not proven that it's all speculative. You go to these books, you know, and you can show that the books don't say that and the books are working on completely different theories. And they still don't like, you know, they still don't change their beliefs. So it's like a, as a thought experiment, how would you get through to those people? And I was spending some time trying to do that. And it was just like banging your head on the wall. It just didn't matter what you said. If you, you know, tried to talk about logic or you tried to bring out the books or you tried to, it didn't matter what you did. That's the part I can't get. Yeah, that's what, probably, what's the most interesting to me. Go ahead, Smiley. You probably have a better chance at getting an Antifa bitch to stop watching CNN. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> probably. Yeah, it's, uh. They they come at me like specifically today. This guy's like, just give me one proof of one contradictory thing <laughs> in his in his research. And so I laid it out. I said, I took his last video. I put it in the um, you can paste it in and get the transcript from it. So I got the exact transcript of exactly what he said about this book written by whatever her name is like T Twyla or something. He says it's an ancient book, and he wrote about it in his community tab recently too. And then. He says it's like some old ancient book and EBT and I looked at our EBT, I should say, did the the legwork. And it's a book that was published in 2004. And then they say it's like rare because on Amazon it's $400. But if you look anywhere else, you can get it for under $20. And then the main source that he's quoting that he put in his book about those the lady Twyla or whatever she put. It was about Jewish legends. And they said some something about a, the number 138 was in there. Well, that's like an it's an just a source right it's just like an unfounded source that's she just said it basically it's quoting a legend it's not based on anything and he says he doesn't he doesn't do that yeah it, but it then the guy, i laid that all out for the guy with the screenshots and everything like nothing he's still coming back raging like Whoa, blah, blah. yeah, yeah cool. he makes he he makes claim he makes claims like uh the sumerians started using clay tablets because they witnessed the anuna using fucking electric tab like electronic tablets and it's like wait a minute like you can't make claims like that and say that's a fact like what kind of shit is that and you get banned you like they don't they don't want to hear it yeah though the, he keeps like this huge guard of mods in front of him so people that have legitimate questions in his live chat get deleted right away MRPs and MAUDs. Yeah, and I think that uh, Tartarian Truth guy is just doing the Lord's work with a lot of his videos, you know, in, in a humorous way, showing a lot of these contradictions back to back, just like right in your face. I don't believe anything I can't prove, and then he can't prove anything. I mean, those those clips are, speak, you know, I mean, they're, it's right in front of your face, but it does they're his own matter. words. They're yeah, that's, what, words. that's funniest about Tartarian Truth is he, they call him a troll and everything. He doesn't say a word. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> like, his own words or the all these different channels, he does that too. Tartarian Truth. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, don't care. Tartarian. <laughs> Tartarian Truth <laughs> is ilk. <laughs> so what's happening here and the reason like there's good feedback and, and people coming in to talk about it is because he's completely shut down all the talk about it on his channel so when i read that blog he wrote five thousand days without a penthouse that shows what a liar and sexual deviant he is then on that blog he blames everything that happens in prison <laughs> the people turning gay and all the aggression that's going to come out on a society he blames that on the censors inside the texas prison but then he heavily censors his own channel and then wonders why this type of thing happens, what's happening right now. Even if it was a little one-handed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he says, he just sells it as, yeah, I've never 
I was never on the internet when I was on the inside. And so my research is pure and untainted from the internet. But then you, oh, got, you know, you, you got, you know, phone. damn well, he, he was all on that truth or shit. Well, he had that phone in his cell. For sure. You'd think so. You know, damn well, he was fucking researching shit through that phone. It's like so dumb. It's, it's, it kind of breaks my mind even trying to argue it on a like straight up level like the rocks are melted buildings you know you can't even really like the more you wrestle with this like oil or something you can't you can't like get it off i mean it's like it's like a simple like nothing is proven it's totally speculative he's just it's i mean he he openly admits that it's all just confirmation bias that he doesn't look at any evidence to the contrary so it's just it's what I, I i don't i i'm still just dumbfounded i think that's why i get stuck on it too i'm just dumbfounded that people think it's like the most brilliant thing ever and, i love uh, this I, shit i love the this other shit. thing too i would i'd bring up is he mentions charles fort a lot in the book of the damned but charles fort whole thing was sort of a rejection of the materialist position and the idea that your scientists and your materialists had excluded all the evidence to the contrary and things that didn't fit their model so and then jason comes in and does the exact opposite of what charles oh, shit. is doing so he he uses charles ford's name but if you read the book of the dam the first chapter talks about this idea that he's trying to include everything that the materialist forgot so it's the exact opposite of what jason is saying it's it he's trying to stop confirmation bias whereas jason is including confirmation bias and uh charles Fort isn't saying that everything that he includes in his record is true because we know that in the golden age of newspapers newspapers would print some crazy shit to keep readers reading the newspaper it would kind of be like your wild you know your wild news section right your crazy news story so he was including all those, but he wasn't saying those things 100% happened or that they were proof of some Phoenix phenomena. No, it, it, it was just all the stuff that science wouldn't consider. So it was a completely opposite impulse. But then he uses him as some, you know, he talked about how much he loves him, but it's like, did you even read the book? Did you read the first chapter? Because it says you shouldn't engage in confirmation bias. You shouldn't just look for the facts that support your theory. You should look at the whole picture which is not what jason is doing so he, he originally and, he originally built his whole shit on the zachariah stitch and alien ancient alien shit now he pretends that he's he's above all that like it's right i got the book or i got a book right here it's it's return of the fallen ones and it's it's the whole entire fucking book is based on that fucking theory it's just yep. he's adding to it and now he denounces it and again, to be, you know, not be uh, inflammatory or whatever, but I really think we're seeing MK Ultra 21st century with these characters. And that's what I've been talking a lot on my channel about with the platforms themselves. But I also think, you know, and I hate to call Jason a charismatic figure because I don't find him that charismatic, but apparently a lot of middle-aged older women do. But I think they <laughs> use... Uh, they use figures like that i mean if you look at jim jones or something it's a little different because it's on the computer and it's the 21st century but a lot of the tactics are the same so they took fringe groups counterculture people in the conspiracy theory movement and pimped them just like jim jones pimped counterculture people in the 60s and 70s it's the same shit and that's yeah. that's really what we're talking about here. Or at least I am. Like when I look at him, is like co co Intel Pro. Now this is a real conspiracy that you can really prove. I'm not saying Jason yep. is that, but in the you can look in the past and prove yep. players in the past were that. So obviously it's still happening today. But co Intel Pro and the real things that you can physically talk about and prove is not exciting enough for these people. They want to hear the Grand Canyon is a melted building. There's a phoenix every 138 years and just like just keeps increasing in the bat shitness of it the fucking the, the mountains the mountains are actually petrified giants yep. 
Well, and we know I, what I, that's I, from. It's it's apophenia, I believe is the word, where our brains are trained to see familiar shapes. That's why when you look at clouds, you can see, you know, trains. Absolutely. Your brain does that. It it makes it into shapes. But apparently that doesn't exist to these people. Yeah, I don't know. I I almost think you would have to cook up a conspiracy theory that like attracted them away from the conspiracy theory on the question of how would we deprogram these people i think you would almost have to cook up a greater pile of madness than the oh, madness they this, believe that's what a new this dope guy's the, this guy's the final boss of truthers i don't know if you could incorporate <laughs> any more things like he has literally everything incorporated into it uh I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. It's just the fans to me are just like the most bewildering thing is when you read reading those comments is just I can't get over it. Well, my favorite line is that all academia is afraid of him. I love that one. Yeah, no, they're not. I promise. No, they're not. They don't even know who you are. This is such a fringe thing on a YouTube community. And it appears big here, but in the big picture, academia is just going right along you know i'm not saying everything they say is perfect but they don't care about archaics at all I, i'm with you on that because i i've i've had that mindset before where it's all they're all liars and they're just lying to us and academics this they're hiding all this shit from us that's true in some cases but a lot of these a lot of these people like a lot of he, he cites egyptologists and in, in Flinders Petrie, but then he goes and talks shit about academics. It's like, bro, like they were just as compromised back then. Right. Every, what makes what makes Royal what, everything he cites is right. And Freemace, like that one Twyla one I was telling you guys about earlier, that Twyla book he said was old and rare. She's also the the picture you pull up when you type her name in Google. It's her wearing a huge Freemason chain. And I included that in the screenshots to that guy that was asking me just one proof, man, of one contradictory thing. You know, they want one and then they're going to want another one and another one. The same thing you experienced, Austin. They'd say, oh, you have to read all this book. For you to have a question, you have to read all, every single book. But for me to believe it, I don't have to read one book. And is he ever, I still haven't seen any video. And I basically have shut this dude up. But when I was watching, I never saw him go deep into any book. <laughs> I haven't seen him read from a book at all. One book. Well, he's reading his book. The, the, <laughs> yeah, a, the fairy. That's a good point. Because that's none of these books, I've gone through a bunch of them, and none of these books say what he says they <laughs> say. None of them hold his theory. None of them have even hard facts that support it, or even right. speculative facts that support it. But that's what's so crazy is on that same one I'm keep talking about is that Twyla one. You can go look in his community post, and he says. The PDF someone had didn't have the part that he sourced in his book. So then he called his friend up and his friend had the actual book and he took a picture of the page and put it on his community tab and circled it. It's about a legend of something, something every like it says something like the angels had to leave after 138 years or something. But it's an unsourced claim. <laughs> so that's what his number one thing. He says he doesn't take unsourced claims. He also wasn't that connected to the Hebrew text. It, it had about Jacob's ladder or something. So again, it's a Kabbalic numerology thing, not an actual superstructure in the sky thing. There's he's forcing the connection, but why force that connection at all? It's like it doesn't even yeah, make that's, sense. That's the doomsday aspect of the cult. Yeah, because how he? I mean, because he talks about sources, but he cites people like Chris Dunn or or right. Or Harold T. Wilkins, like Harold T. Wilkins is the is the freaking uh, Graham Hancock of his day. It's good. It's fun shit to read. It's fun. It's fun. Oh, I love alternate history. I love all the crazy shit, but it's not facts. You're citing fucking you're citing these fucking bullshit books and you he still cites like stitching when he wants it to fit in his fucking things like, bro, you're. And he's essentially trying to bait Graham Hancock for his own thing exactly what maybe we could be accused of doing right now yeah 100 yeah 
but but he's he's trying to do the same thing. He's trying to get their attention so that he can battle out with them. I mean, it's his. That's the thing where I start getting the COINTEL Pro because it, there's some machinations here and some propaganda that's pretty sophisticated. And he's allegedly running all these other businesses, and I mean, he's got a pretty like uh, snazzy little presentation that it's like, where's he getting the time, energy, money? to cook all this up and the skills, right? He's in prison this whole time, but all these uh, video clips and all this stuff, it's like, who, how is he able to do all this and be putting up Christmas lights? <laughs> and like, <laughs> he, he said recently that he stopped all businesses, <laughs> even the Christmas one and everything. So now he's doing that. And he's got his one helper that can't, can't even figure out OBS now. <laughs> I can't. I can't hate Matt. I don't hate Matt, man. I just. I, I don't hate either one of the guys, regardless of what anyone says. I will judge a predator and a sex offender, though. But I mean, yes, I, yeah, absolutely. And what I don't care. That's why it's so funny. Every comment I read is like, "You're jealous. You're jealous." Like, no, I promise you, I'm not jealous. Well, here's where I'm at with this stuff. I'm not jealous. Yes, I like watching this shit. I love. I'm gonna be watch his videos until I finally get bored of them. But I like this shit. I like alternative history. I even like Stitchin's bullshit fucking Anunnaki theories, like stories. I know it's bullshit, but it's fun stuff like sci-fi. So that's why I'm watching this shit. And I'm here and I know some of this shit. So it's fun pointing it out, you know? But imagine the <laughs> imagine ahead, the craziness but... that we went from exposing the human traffickers and the child molesters to being led by a sex offender and a child molester. <laughs> how does how does this like basic fact escape these people's understanding? Like that's a Absolutely. real thing. Like, like I, it's like there's a fervor and a frenzy around the live chat and everything for them, and I think they just get swept up into that or something because they're definitely not thinking about it at all. When you read the live chat, it's going this fast, and it's nothing. None of it's talking about anything he's talking about at all. It's just it's a hug box. They're grovelers, and it's sick. They're just groveling at his feet. Yeah, but it's bizarre. I don't think he even believes the theory that he's concocted. I think he knows how to put it together. But when you go on his website, there's a blog. It's called something like... Um, you. I, I can't remember right now. I'm going to say it wrong. I'll see if I can pull it up while we're talking in a minute, but there's a blog that's super long about basically like his philosophies and beliefs. I, th I think he believes his philosophies and stuff that he lays down, but I don't think he believes all the like conspiratorial type things and everything. And, and I think the simulation theory in itself is a pretty sketchy sort of dehumanizing idea that you find the mainstream media humoring and pushing on people and it's sort of like his theory where you don't have to do anything there's no point to live a fulfilling life and build real relationships with people that all you really need to do is just like sit back and accept you know the, the just be a passive observer of what's going on around you that what you do doesn't really have consequences and all this it's like that's a horrible way to live well, he's uh, he's definitely a moral relativist because I found I just put the link in the chat. If you go to it, it goes to his page and it's called Act As If You Are and You Will Be. And it's super long. So if you don't want to read the whole thing, just scroll down and read the bullet points because it's pretty interesting. Basically, he says he's able in the just the bullet points only like he's able to manifest any kind of things towards him that he wants to. He's able to manifest any situation which that's not true. You weren't able to manifest your way out of the prison. Um, he says he's able to like make sure no resistance will come against him just with his thoughts and stuff like, well, that's not true. We're here resisting against you right now. Um, here, here's some more of it. It says, I'm just going to read a little of the bullet points. My assumptions of truth become the truth. That's one of them. That's a, yeah, that's why I thought it was funny when he had a he had a live chat question once that said, like, what do you think about my truth, your truth, 
type thinking and he skipped that question. He answers, he doesn't even answer the questions, but he'll ramble on for 20 minutes for each question. But he totally skipped that one because because he believes it. I think he think he believes in all that moral relativism. And this whole theory is what I call like intellectual relativism. How are you gonna cite Mandela effect? But then everything is your entire backbone of your thing is that I read these books from before World War II. Okay, but if you believe in Mandela effect and you promote that, then what prevented those books from changing? Yeah, and I was curious too about his fiction. And I think that uh, he's starting to share some of that. And yeah. just like I suspected you would find, it's full of the same sketchy, weird sort of sexual stuff. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, there was so one, in people's face. Aryan Truth shared it's like in the book there's like a 11 year old girl that like rapes sex slaves to death but it's okay because she's really 93 she just looks 11. <laughs> like what the fuck dude yeah and that's that's weird as fuck to begin with but it's super weird from a registered sex offender yeah in the context i mean yeah. of the whole thing well and that's another thing we could and i don't want to take too many shots at this guy but uh since we're i just fucking love you dude and, and since we're just freestyling, and and, uh, and again, I I don't want to beat this dude up too much, but I got recommended this book. This is actually Quantum of Conscience book, and I just recently read this. Bring this guy back! Holy cow, we were dogging on him before. He's nothing compared to Jason. Yeah. Oh no. Bush it's it. a different thing, but it's got elements of the same thing. Okay. And uh, as a uh, as a writer, I mean, this was just the most, and again, I, I don't even like being mean, and I wrestle with with being too hardcore on these people, especially Matt. He's sort of a, a sappy, pathetic character that I really don't want to beat up too hard. But it is just a terrible, terrible book from a writer's perspective, the way it's written. It's all, it's all telling, no showing, just the whole thing, the way it's, it's paced you know, the info dumps, whatever, For, from a writer's perspective, I could tear it up from that. But to our conversation here, again, there's an odd arrested development understanding of sexuality in this book that is just a little creepy when you read it. And I tried to ignore it for about the first 50 pages of the book. And then there's one scene and I can't even really read it or share it with you guys because it's so sort of graphic and inappropriate i don't want to you know i don't even want to put it out here like this but it's just like what it is going on and the same thing with matt we find matt on fox news we find matt on Infowars, and then i mean he's got the weird insurance company or whatever that i've heard about we've got sort of this strange character and ultimately my beef with him is just like archaic he, his whole the whole theme of his stuff is a passiveness towards life that there's nothing we can do we, we, we can't ever figure out who the criminals are it doesn't even matter who the bad guys are this sort of thing that the whole reality is fake that we all should just sit back and sort of shake our heads about it you know and then the weird sex stuff and I mean, it's yeah. Um, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Is because we were <laughs> we were being mean to Matt, saying like, "Oh, you know, your stuff is, you know, unprovable." And I was calling his stuff intellectual relativism because it's just pick and choose whatever you want anytime, and then switch whenever you want, like Mandela effect or anything. You know, retro cause you could just say anything, and then that's what the theory is. But now I've been thinking about it, and it's almost like Matt. Uh, paved the way for this archaic guy. He got everyone into this mindset of every single thing is on the table. Anything we need to always be thinking as big as we possibly can. That's literally what he says. And then one guy comes in with, with literally everything on the table. And now it's all of a sudden accepted because I think Matt, Matt was the fluffer for Jason. Jason's the bull now showing up. Matt fluffed your mind up. Yep. And is it, it you know, it, is it uh, is there collusion in, in a yeah. broader sense? I'm That's not so sure. I wonder, and there's no way you could ever prove it. But it's is there like is there this long template like a like a reality TV show or like a Netflix series where you get this guy and he he leads you to this direction and now they pass the ball to this other guy and now he's going to lead you somewhere else until his well, time. With, and then you have the, the 
kidnapping connection. And then Jason comes up and <laughs> it's not what it's on his charge, but what he says the charge is, is kidnapping. And where was the truth community at before this? Like we really peaked at the Pizzagate, Clinton emails, all that shit, right? That there was some madness in all that. Some serious, like, craziness that the WikiLeaks emails and all that. That was kind of the climax of the first generation of conspiracy theory. And then all that got pushed aside. And then everything that's come up after that has just been crazier and crazier, not based in fact, not based in reality, not actionable. And now people are just believing the wildest shit. And it's like, what happened to the first batch of stuff? Just ignored what's, now. What's the correlation between these channels like that and then the weird voices? So you have archaics with the weird voice. You have Ewar. Sorry, Ewar. No, Ewar's in here sometimes, but he's got the weird voice. And he was on, he was the first one, not the first one, but one of the biggest ones on the like Tartarian train, even though he's flipped now. But then you got that God gave Lambsty or whatever. Have you ever seen that one, Austin? It's called Crater Earth. God gave Lambsty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> the craziest voice ever and these people just have this weird way of talking and like i've never heard people like this in real life you know what i mean like john john, john levi yeah levi too yawn levi <laughs> he's got Dude, the, he's, uh, the reason i can't listen to him only because he pops his lips so fucking he, people who pop their <laughs> lips i can't i can't do it now john levi on the last one he had one in the middle of the week it came out wednesday or whatever i don't know when but it was literally, um, what do you call it? AI art pictures, and he's showing them and speculating like they're real. And half the chat, half of the comments are like, "Yeah, this is 100% not real. These are totally AI." There's even watermarks down there, is what the chat's saying. But then the other half of the chat is like, "Wow, look at these things in Antarctica! Wow!" And he was featured in a New York Times article, I believe. Was he really? John Levy, yeah. And I know he on was the re uh, on, on the Rogan, reset top bottom. Yeah, on the reset stuff. He was given. Okay, they mentioned him on Rogan, and Eddie Bravo mentioned him, and Rogan didn't seem too interested in it, but at least he was talked about. And then, you know, no people probably went and looked it up. But another funny thing is that Archaics talks about Joe Rogan and kind of hints that he wants to get on Joe. Oh, Rogan. yeah. So crazy to me. Absolutely. That theory this all-encompassing theory and realities uh you know just controlled by the small hats and everything that he says uh he believes in joe rogan he believes in donald trump he believes in tom mcdonald and all this all this like mainstream things is what he talks about like he believes in it. i don't know what he believes in he's a patriot yeah how could and you Trump's believe in donald trump especially Trump's a patriot They're and we know is in voting <laughs> we, and we know at different times in history theories like this took off and have pretty bad consequences the french revolution world war ii they got immersed in all this same sort of flavor of outlandish conspiracy theories and it sort of creates so much cognitive dissonance and so much fracturing of the psyche that then you need a totalitarian government to come over the top of it, which is essentially what Jason is saying, ironically enough, to sort of take control of the craziness. And so it seems to be priming for that, even the anti-Semitism and the small hat stuff, which again, you know, you can have whatever opinion you want of that, but how much of that is starting to percolate as being like, okay, you know, it, it does become alarming. All the out there through kanye and everything it's like a mainstream thing right now yeah yeah you find that you find that in these circles that like there's sort of a soft anti-semitism that's peddled and i frankly find all this sort of like gross that a lot of the things that i heard the mainstream media say about conspiracy theorists now seem to be true the hiding in your base mom's basement uh, it's actually like code words for, uh, you know, white nationalism and anti-Semitism. All these things that at one point in my life, I was like, oh, that's mainstream media propaganda trying to paint a picture of the so-called truth community. 
but now you actually see these themes rising to the surface so it's like you know figure it out i guess that's what they've been saying that about for years right about david ike that the reptilian is just a code word for small hat stuff like that but yeah now it's going more and more mainstream nba players and everything uh i wonder if they're trying to lead now to the what is it the albert pike or whatever the third third world war and and do the christians against against muslims type thing so i could totally see like these nba players and maybe even kanye flipping and joining like some kind of um muslim nation type thing or something like that yeah and i've been actually working through morals and dogma by albert pike and once again you know he's sort of like a blavatsky figure that people make out to be like the absolute worst of the worst and i'm not saying i you know stand by everything albert pike says obviously but again when you read that stuff it's not you know there's no uh, child sacrifice being talked about i still haven't found the phoenix page at the 33rd degree i'm not quite there yet i should probably go to that part to see if that's even there jason says but again it's not i don't know you don't find really anything that nefarious or ugly in that work by albert pike just as a side note but see i actually read the stuff that's my you know stupid me i actually go and read the thing so i don't just believe a bunch of bullshit but yeah that's that's the problem too people don't dig into this shit. I, i'm guilty of that i've been guilty of that plenty of bunch of times yeah. Be believing that i believe in that i know the truth and i'm a, like oh man all the sheeple and calling people sheeple and why are people so dumb it's like no i'm, I'm pretty fucking retarded myself but so, what yeah. do you think this will lead to let's say this plays out even more and worse absolute worst case scenario i'm not saying this will happen but like it does turn into some kind of heaven's gate scenario or something like that let's just say uh is it just something they're using to like prime people for more and more internet censorship or even maybe take away the ability for these creators to get on youtube and make money and stuff like that like is he gonna is he is, is he going to build a compound and fill it full of airsoft guns? Yeah. I think he already did. He's got the key. He's got the fencing in the pods. <laughs> he's building the, He's building another killdozer with his van. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that whole thing is weird to me. You have a van, you have a tricked out black van and you're a registered sex offender on the record as, <laughs> <laughs> man like the is irony a, is completely missed on on the people i think i think he knows it and then that, i think he likes that like i don't know i mean i don't know him so i can't say that and, and where i think it's going is just more of the same i think the powers that be love love all this i think it serves them perfectly because you have the free thinking community people that would be open to you know anti-war movements and this sort of thing being wrapped up in all these crazy ideas that they can never get together and you know create any sort of legs to any sort of change so i think it serves their purposes quite well and it, it's they're also stacking you know taxing and stacking off of it through youtube and google they're getting the money we're working for them on the platforms so I, I think it's going to be just the same old shit, endless wars, the human trafficking continues, all the plans that they already had just keep going. I, you know, I don't think. And what's so crazy with our cakes is he's made all these predictions about a big slide to the right and all this sort of bullshit. And none of that's going to happen. But I don't think that's even going to matter. I think he'll just keep uh, cherry picking the beliefs and the facts and. No one val you know, no one checks any of it anyway, so it won't even matter. I think they've already achieved the goal. I think I think EBT, I think EBT said it and he and he nailed it a while back when he said he basically blew his load. So he's gotta he's gotta figure out a way to keep this shit fresh eventually because he he already came out the fucking gate with everything. So but I'm sure he'll find a way to weave new things and keep weaving new 
theories into it and keeping it fresh and, and keeping an audience. But I think there's going to be a chance where a, a, a chunk of them are going to ha- are going to wake up to a shit because there's always going to be people that start waking up to their shit. So. Yeah, the more he talks, the more he contradicts himself. So the more you listen to it. But again, there's that community behind it. And I think that's what the people like. They like the bonding of the community. They come in and they say, hey, Archaics family. They like that. They don't have anyone to talk about this stuff to in real life, I feel like. I can't wait to join his Discord. Hey, Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix Protocol. Let me join your Discord. (laughs) Dude, they'll sniff you out now. I bet they tighten that shit up. Yeah, I heard they I heard they you got to answer like all these quizzes questions to get in there now <laughs> because of the tro- quote unquote trolls what they call trolls oh. like you could accuse That's me a- when I was in there what I did of trolling but Austin you were in there just asking legitimate questions so I'm sure they call you a troll it's just a way to oh yeah on any dissent or any kind of legitimate questions he calls it attacking any he que- anybody who's questioning him is attacking him. Like those are like specific words he uses. And then he yeah. even told his, he even told his errands, it's not really attacking me. It's attacking you. He's telling them that the trolls are attacking them. I, uh, you get I, what I'm saying? I, I said that wrong, but no, you're right. Said that, that's what he said. He programmed them. Well, I think there's a two part thing. He sees how dumb they look in the comments. And it's a bad look for him and his brand from just the yep. lunatic shit they say. But then he's also saying, yeah, what you said, it's you're not again. They're not against me. They're against you. Yeah. Yep. Which is yep. classic. Cool. But you're right. <laughs> I don't I don't really care what he does because I'm all about creators rights and stuff. So feel free to say that. But don't be mad when there's people out here calling bullshit on it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't care. Build your cult. I don't really give a shit. You know, and as I've been, as I've been exploring these subjects, and we talked about it a little bit the first time we spoke. The thing that sort of blows me away is to I've yet very few people, and I've been talking to a lot of people in sort of a lot of different circles through this YouTube thing that kind of intersects with all these ideas, and it's about, I mean over 90% of the people that I speak with have some serious form of trauma in their life. And so we were joking the other night on my chat about, you know, drama based mind control. So it's sort of a play on the word of trauma based mind control. And that's why I have been using the word MK ultra a lot to try to reseed that concept back into people's thought process, because I find that sort of on a human level, sort of the most heartbreaking part that people are having real human trauma and then are being pimped off of that trauma. And that is what cults do, right? That's what Charlie Manson did. That's what all these other people did. They find broken people exactly. and then they use them for their own profit. Or That's control what I think them. about him as he knows the exact, whether he seeks them out. I don't know how he could, or if they're just the type of people that are drawn to him. It's extremely broken people when you read the comments and stuff like that. Spiritually bankrupt people. And, and that's why they get so upset about you attacking them because, and that's why you can't do it in a direct way because they, they're, it's fueled. The gas of that is their own personal trauma. So you are actually, they have a savior and you're actually like the person who traumatized them because they've created like a scab over their trauma with this bullshit. And so you coming in and raking on that scab and saying, no, that's not really healed. You know, even though that's not your intention, you are provoking their trauma response. That's why you're getting such a, a, a pushback And you know, and I'm not Dr. Freud or something over here. That's, just a guy with a bunch of books, speculation. But well, you can you can just call yourself a psychiatr- psychologist, just like he calls himself a chronologist. What's the difference? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah how it, exactly. <laughs> and it's funny because yes, the er- that the the errants, I I see them all the time saying that the call in the collective, all the normies are in the collective. We're outside of the collective, but you just built your own collective. You're in another collective. Yeah, exactly. You're in an echo. You're in an echo chamber. 
it's no different than the leftist and watching CNN and or or any of these other different groups and cults. And I'm guilty of it. I, we're human beings. I've always said that human beings are probably prone to it because we're pack animals or whatever the fuck case may be. We we somehow form groups and whether if it's sports teams or or even in school, if this lunch table, that lunch table. But there's a point in time where we're, it's probably a good idea to recognize that when you're falling into it so you don't get yourself into some shit that you can't get out of and there are people basing their future plans in life on this stuff yeah do absolutely you that for a second austin since you had that experience good point well good point. And again you know it's you don't have to just people thing if, but just like yeah like, yeah because i don't want to you know again yeah. it's that thing i was just saying that people are desperate to belong they're desperate to have a future and so again just like the 60s and 70s you have people that and even the phoenix protocol guy this idea he was going he's got this plan and i wrote about it and he says i mean they say it on public things so at the same time you know it is what it is but they have the idea of creating little communities and little communes in other places but there's no sort of realistic understanding of what that actually entails to do and and you can just imagine the clusterfuck that is going to be any of these communities if they actually and they won't i mean not trying to be the total hater but nothing is going to happen they're going to stay right where they're at because that takes actual hard work to start a farm to build a community and it takes money and you know once money gets involved all these conspiracy theories are fun and games but when you actually got to put some money, some skin in the game, that has that sobers people up, right? But I mean, they're giving them tons of money at the same time. But there are people that are trying to plant communities based on a lot of these ideas. And it's not just Jason's ideas. It's sort of the whole bag of new age ideas that people um, are planting. Honey, what do you think is the, I don't even know the, question i want to ask like what's the motivator behind these people to give so much money because i went if you go and look at his buy me a coffee it shows how many like don't how many different people have donated or something and on his page when i looked last it was like nearing 700 i don't remember the exact number and that was a few weeks ago and then i did the same thing and i went to days of noah who has over 100,000 subscribers and he had 33 only that the magic number 33 so the difference between a guy with a hundred thousand having 33 people donating on the, that that buy me a coffee platform versus this other guy that just kind of recently exploded and days of Noah has been doing it a long time and then to him have approaching 700 what do you think is the the catalyst for these people to like reach in their wallet because he's not really act, he's not out there saying hey Make sure you send the money. He's not really saying that at all. He's not begging for it or anything. It to me, it's a lot. Their their personality types are the grovelers, so they're they're throwing the money out to like gain favor with them or whatever. That's part of it, in my opinion. I see the I I see I witnessed the same thing. I usually like to hang out in, in areas of the internet where we watch crazy people online, and they call them lol cows. And I'm sure you guys know about all that shit, but. I, I see a phenomenon of, of crazy people online. I watched, I witnessed this woman, a pregnant woman, go on a tirade on YouTube and streaming all kinds of shit. She's smoking weed while pregnant. She was getting kicked out of apartments or her mom's house and hotels. It was just this whole group. And people were sending this bitch money. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't have an answer to that. I think it's the trauma. It's the trauma. It's like, how much do people pay their therapists? How much do they pay, you know, in the time to go into that? Like once you identify with that charismatic figure, then you're ready to you're ready to go all in. And all those cults do that. All the cults take all their members' money. It's a it's a system. That's what I'm trying to get people to understand with the MK Ultra talk, is that they were cooking up systems with drugs and stuff to alter people's behavior. And that was their goal explicit goal and it never quite worked with the drugs and with the actual real life cults because things just got too weird but with these platforms you get all the tools of a cult right here in your living room 
it's like it's like cold it's like deliver a cold through youtube and so yeah, i see it, i see what you're saying it's a, system. Not. it's a system so we have a whole package we, ha we have a package of everything that you need to, to to join and build a cult online and on our phones and in these echo chambers yep and so it's a powerful force it's it's hard to escape because once you join and you're hearing all this stuff you're not you can't be a real member until you get skin in the game right that's how you really feel a part of it that's how you really identify it because people care so much about money so it's like that's how you really show that no i'm i'm here for you and it's funny that term errant literally means to be in error it's a person who is erring <laughs> a person who is making mistakes that's what an errant is and they don't even get it. The irony is completely lost. It's so weird to me, though, because I don't hear them. Like, you hear a lot of these other creators that are like, you know, hey, make sure you throw down, you know, here and there or whatever. I've heard James True say, hey, this is me kind of jiggling the hat today, you know, getting a little love. I've heard him say literal things like that. But with Jason, I don't hear that at all. But there's something that maybe they don't maybe they don't have the comprehensive system and that wouldn't really that's not really the slick way see if you just ask someone for money i feel like psychologically they're almost more likely to say no whereas right. if you say i don't need your money right i don't want your money it's not about your money you can have all my information for free it's like that it's reverse psychology almost there you go that makes a lot of sense to me actually yeah yeah he's it's doing it, he's doing he's He's doing a good job selling books and selling books for his his publisher. Yeah, good for him, Paul Tice. His publisher is Paul Tice. You can find him. He's even got videos on YouTube, and he was the videographer for Zechariah Sitchin back in the day. Well, that's another thing. I'm wondering why no one has done like a FOIA uh, type thing into his actual case because all that stuff should be public record. And he even mentioned, I believe it was something ortiz or something or i forget his name but he actually mentioned the prosecuting attorney in his case so yeah. sooner or later that stuff is going to bubble up and maybe that'll finally be the achilles heel of this guy when you actually have i think it will are you guys familiar with um i just watched a video on youtube it, it, it's a, the channel was called like the plot hole or something and it was about Kent Hovine. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Kent Hovine. So, oh, yeah. I really don't know too much about him. I'm a little bit familiar with him. He debates about like creationism and stuff like that. But apparently, there's like his right hand man, I forget the guy's name, is um, a, a convicted uh, child. He messed with the child, right? And it's on record. You can pull it up and look at it and see. And then those guys in the video I'm talking about, they got the, the, um, paperwork for it and it said uh yeah what it says exactly what he did i'm not even going to talk about it here it's pretty sick and uh but then there's video of kent hovine that's still even after this and he's like yeah none of that is true it was just accusations he beat the case in court and everything like that because there's people pushing back against it so i wonder if it's the same type of thing that these con men no matter what even if they get caught as long as they deny it then 80% of their cult or whatever will still never look into it or never double check and just believe it anyway. Yeah, I wonder. I want I wonder I wonder that. I wonder if they are like refusing to believe that he has to register every year. It's like that it seems like they don't want to believe it or or don't think it's true. I it's weird. It's really weird. I I have some of the comments screenshots that I wanted to share too, but the one lady was like, "Well, we know he's registered, but there's zero evidence that he did anything." you know the system is corrupt <laughs> like that's you know? that's kind of what that that's kind of what jay dreamers was going on like i i didn't even care i never even got into jay dreamers i don't even heard of him recently but that whole stream he did was basically saying that like oh we, you guys we can't trust the government and and all that shit. but it's like wait a minute he told us the story he's just he's fibbing a little bit about it but he put himself in that story so it's not a lie but it's not a government lie why he's registered uh, Jay Dreamers, 
isn't registered though, right? You're talking about Jason. No, no, no. I'm talking about Jason. He did that stream apologizing for Jay. He was mad. He was saying that we shouldn't trust like the rulings yeah. on air or whatnot. Yeah, I see what you're because, saying. Because because it's the government and the law and all that. Like you can't trust the law. Like you can't trust no, no, he this guy is fucking he's guilty. He pled guilty. I showed the paperwork. He pled guilty. That means he was facing worse charges. So he took a plea to get 30 years with the hope of being out in seven and a half. And I haven't watched seven. I haven't watched much of that Jay Dreamer stuff at all. But he, he does seem in the same bag of another just outlandish. None of it really makes sense. I can't understand why anyone's buying it watching it selling it he's got the same thing where it's super glossy and overproduced and then he has some and i don't even know but he has some sort of uh prison sentence and all this too and this comes out of a lot of these like conspiracy theories and stuff come out of big cities and again there were older models of this pre-internet where people would hustle this stuff sort of like a street hustler sort of thing with the books and, you know, on street corners. And, and there's sort of a history of that where prisoners and ex-cons, they go and they cook this stuff up, you know, in prisons, you know, sort of anti-man talk or whatever, getting back at the man talk. And so it, it seems to be some 21st century version of that, where it's pseudo-intellectualism, where there's a good rap to it, you know, and it preys on gullible people and they use their convict story to kind of get over it. Sort of like a snake oil salesman type thing. And But it goes into with what I've been talking about on this channel for a while. If, if you look at the channels that interact together, it seems like there's like different networks, like little nodes. They're all little nodes that kind of interact together and this, there's this one that's like the the prison the prisoners like they kind of all interact there so there's that jay dreamers jason of course and then the guy that shared the video santo shared um when he talked about the astrology of it his name was decode your reality i've never really heard of him but he had like thirty five thousand subscribers but somebody in the chat told me that guy's a felon too and that he has jason on or something like that too i, I never double checked that but that's just what somebody said and i could totally see that yeah that that just brings to mind oh i'm sorry go ahead be smiling no go ahead but i wasn't going to say nothing oh, oh, this, I, I was going to say thing is there's there's also that jason nino guy he's been doing with when you look his name up he has like uh priors and stuff too but go ahead yeah, he. I, I saw he was talking about I didn't listen because that guy, again, I listen to that guy and I don't find anything. I haven't listened too much. I saw the interview with Jason. Same. Yeah, that guy seems sort of really dumb to me. And he was talking about this portal over the White House. Like, what the, the hell are people talking about? But And the other guy I was going to bring up that's just super crazy. And again, I, I, you know, I try to give him the little bit of, of the benefit of the doubt because he does maybe actual research and actually show stuff. But it's this mind unveiled character and it's this whole recent cabbage patch kids. Oh, okay, yeah. well, what that is, because I hear people talking about it. I've never heard of this guy and I've never seen that video. What is it? it connects to this idea of incubator babies. And this is just, again, so, so stupid. <laughs> and people just aren't doing the most basic level of critical thinking. <laughs> but it connects to the idea of incubator babies. So incubators were uh, displayed at the World's Fair, the Chicago World's Fair, I believe, in whatever, the 1900s, 1890, wh whatever. One of the World's Fair. And they're like, ooh, incubators, you know. And, the, and again, they never say it explicitly. But then with the mind unveiled, they showed all these old pictures of the idea of like a cabbage patch kid. And it'd be like little babies associated with the cabbage patch, sort of like the stork thing or whatever, you know, th this is how babies are made or whatever. And then they try to connect it to the incubator thing. But what's so stupid about that is, is like it doesn't acknowledge that premature babies and infant mortality rate and mother mortality rate before the introduction of modern medical practices 
and before the introduction of something like an incubator, those babies are dying. Mothers are dying at an incredible rate. I mean, take a basic like sex ed class and you will learn about how challenging having children were was back in the day. So they un when they came up with the incubators, this was like a big thing for people and for mothers having babies, having premature babies. So at these World's Fair, they rolled out new technology, which they knew was going to have a big impact. That's the very common sense explanation for what the incubators were. But they they show all these flyers and stuff that mention the incubators and they're like, ooh, you know, they're cooking up babies or something. It's so stupid. What's like you know, look at the premise? Is it like the baby's just artificially created? Is that what they're hinting? Yeah, it's at? this whole orphan. It, it's the same thing with the orphan trains. They're like, oh, why are there so many orphans? Well, it's called the yellow fever. It's called all these illnesses that would kill people. And then, you know, you had uh, a different idea of uh, parent roles back in the day, right? So like a, a mom would die in childbirth and a dad who was trying to go work or whatever would be like, dude, I'm not taking care of this baby. I'm not a woman. I don't know how to take care of a baby and would just give them up. And we have books like this, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, like people, women died at a much higher rate in childbirth back in the day it was a super dangerous thing for a woman to have a baby that's where all the orphans came from it's not a big mystery but they try to smush all these ideas and as always the the logical premise that people don't understand is the argument from incredulity or the argument from disbelief so everything is just a question they don't ever actually say or prove what they believe it's always like oh this doesn't make sense to me why are they showing all, you know, why are there all these postcards of babies in a cabbage patch? When it's like, because they're, it, it's just iconography. It's just an image. Like we have cartoons, you, you know, it's, it's just a cute pairing of babies. It's not. It's I don't so know. Scary. I don't, I don't know, Austin, man. I, I don't know. I think you're wrong, man. Cause I think all the incubator babies came from the star forts. <laughs> <laughs> right. Catapult. I think that's what. Yep, catapulted from the top. That's it. I think that's well, the real purpose of the Star Forge. It It's all built on a foundation of speculation and questions and saying that this doesn't make sense to me. Well, did you study basic history? Did you study basic sex ed? Did you study the mortality rate of women having children and dying in childbirth and the rate of mortality of children being born? No, you didn't. So that's why it doesn't make sense to you because you don't have any real life experience with any of those things. But that's what all this stuff is built out of. Just, oh, start for it. That doesn't make sense. And that there was that recent, I think Awar and them did one on star forts that like made explained all of that in yeah, a really intelligent way. But yeah, how they're just the military for a military base so that couldn't be sieged. Wooden, Wooden Nichols a while back, probably a year or so ago, when he was still kind of doing the Tartaria stuff, but he was still, but he was like doing a few videos that started showing that he started realizing it was kind of dumb. He he put out a video, he found photos of one of the world's fairs of the construction of it and, and the inside of these things where you could just see it's just, a sh there, you, most of that shit was just a shell with metal, with the metal insides. It wasn't, there weren't real buildings. You know, and he found pictures of these things and no, it's not true. Those are fake. Those, those are fake, but the, but they're saying that Tartaria was a one world government. It was a utopia, a one world utopia, ironically. The energy utopia. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking, all the churches were, uh, yeah. energy producers. Cathedral, bro. Cathode, bro. It's cathode. Well, yeah, and I remember reading this book, which is the World's Fair book, Devil in the White City. And this is by a great author, Eric Larson, and I highly recommend all his nonfiction books. But I, I remember being down. I remember being deep into conspiracy theory stuff and reading this book and engaging in that argument, the fallacious action of an argument from incredulity in this book and finding little things like it was hell to make this world fair 
and they did do crazy work. And I remember reading this and, and you know, as a conspiracy theorist, making little notes in my mind, like, ooh, that's a little sus what he said right there. Ooh, that doesn't really make sense what he said right there. But now I, I reflect on it and I realize how stupid that is. So this brilliant author, Eric Larson, went and investigated the World's Fair and all the aspects of it. But he wasn't able to see any of these incongruities himself. And he wrote them in a book. And he wasn't smart enough to figure out this conspiracy theory. But me, the guy who knows nothing about <laughs> it, is sitting here reading the book and trying to build a case, right? Only including the evidence that supports my theory, ignoring all the evidence to the contrary, <laughs> that we have all these people in Chicago. And they're not like, oh, shit, where did all these buildings come from? Oh, shit, they're moving <laughs> Oh, shit, they're moving mud off these buildings and, you know, they're just ancient civilization. They're not saying any of that, right? But my conspiracy theorist brain thought I could decode <laughs> little tidbits in here and make it fit my theory. And that's not how it works, right? So it's like it's that process over and over and over again yep. in these communities where we're not including evidence to the contrary of our theory. We're nitpicking. We're cherry picking. And then we're saying, "Ooh, look. Well, and then this is why people's comments drew like you're finding. It's like, well, we're just asking questions. Right. I get you have questions, but you're not accepting the answers. You're not accepting the alternative theories. And your questions don't amount to shit. They're just questions. Right. And chill, you, you can ask all the questions you want. It's not going to get anything done. It's not going to prove anything. And so it's very strange to be on the other side of all of this now. Yep. And be absolutely. like, damn, I believe some crazy shit. And I was, yep, I, same I thought thing. I was I'm the same way. guy too, but I was engaged in some really bad logic. And then to now try to communicate with people about this stuff and see that same behavior mirrored back to me. It's like, damn. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to say, I feel the same exact way. You said yeah. what I tried to say that I said, tried to say that earlier, but you explained it a lot better. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it takes a, you know, that's a mark of real courage. That's what I like about that AWAR dude, EWAR, AWAR, whatever, is that that takes a lot of courage, man. It would have been much easier for him to just keep pimping that Tartarian stuff. And he, he yeah, could have drifted a, off he, that forever. But he, he did. He could have got some, he, he, he could have still, he could still be getting some money from that shit right now. He could for still sure. be grifting off that right now. I, I'm, it's the same way, man. And, and, I was like that with Woody. I was with I was fucking with Woody a long time ago, and I see he kind of did that. He did the same thing, and but he didn't come out at the bat just talking shit to everybody and calling everybody a retard. He just put out videos once in a while showing how, look, this is what what everybody thinks is or what people keep saying in this Tartaria community is wrong, and he shows proof of it. It's all he did, and everybody fucking went hey shit on him. Chat, yeah, say he's the sure. chat's triggered because you're they're saying like oh yurt believes every every main yep. narrative ever so there's yeah. tr tr <laughs> and just say this is but and you're this, talking to you're talking to a dude good. you're talking to a dude that is so hardcore anti all those things they're talking about spent years years decades like almost two decades on all this stuff that's who they're talking to. You're talking to a dude that never wore a mask. You're talking to a dude who took his children out of school when all this recent madness gone down because I wouldn't comply with all that stuff. Like, that is what's so absurd to have those things said back to me by people. It's like, you have no clue what you're talking about. But it's all, that's the, that's the, um, the consensus narrative of the history so if you don't believe that then you need to have a better argument than a cabbage patch baby you can't just <laughs> where i'm at too is i don't need to where i'm at in the headspace is like i don't need to know what happened 200 years ago 100 years, i don't care it doesn't there's nothing about it that would help my life at all like it would be interesting to know but i'm worried about trying to pay these bills and doing what I got to do. Like, it's just a mystery is fine to me at this point where it never used to be like that. I needed to know every single thing. 
it's that whole idea that the time to believe things is once they're proven. You're not supposed to believe something just because it sounds good to you or because you have a question. You're supposed to believe something after it's proven. And people have that totally reversed. And yes, I'm going to stand with like a lot of mainstream historians over some random person who got a YouTube education. Yes, I'm going to stand with Eric Larson and his accounting of the world fairs over speculative questions from a YouTuber. Yes, I have no problem doing that at all. But it's fine. But it's fine if, if Jason can cherry pick stuff out of ancient historians. It's fine if he does that, though. And then the, the chat says, what's wrong with researching, though? Nothing. Go ahead. Do it. No, nothing. I don't, care. I don't care what you do. I'm just saying my time of doing that is though, I've been when they grinding since 2008 in every single conspiracy genre there is. That That's why I feel like I'm immune to archaics is because I'm at least know a little bit of each one of these things that he talks about. I'm not just like, whoa, shit. Oh, he said Anunnaki. Oh, he said Anuna. Oh, like I've been looking at this shit for so long. That it, and what that is the research? Very first, the very first what, what, quote I read from that lady was like, oh, it's just so mind blowing. Yeah, to you, mother. It does not blow my mind. So I'm on a lot, some. A lot of it, it's baby truth. A lot of it's baby truth or shit. Similac crumbs. <laughs> and, and people use that word research. Uh, super loosely because I do the most basic level of research and you can find evidence to the contrary of the vast majority of these things. So I don't know what research people think they're doing, but they're certainly not looking, they're certainly not researching primary documents from these different periods of time, because if they were, they would find all the documents that are contrary to the crazy shit they believe. And I get it's tough to hear this stuff, man. At, at different points in my life, you know, I wouldn't have liked hearing what I'm saying either. But I've been always committed to the truth as the highest ideal for me. And this stuff is not true. And people need to do real research. Go to actual libraries where they have primary documents from several hundred years ago. And the craziest shit is people come to you as if you don't, like we're saying, have any idea of any of these things. And it's like, no, I do real research on all these things. You know, you have to kind of sit there. And, you know, I had a guy tell me in a Discord the other day about how we have no uh, documents in Latin that are over 500 years old. And then I'm like, oh, what about this vase where they have Latin script on it and they know where it came from and it's 2,000 years old? Crickets. They never... <laughs> They never update the belief. They never say, oh, that's a good point. And it's always a reference to a nut. All their research is people that believe what they already believe. That's not research. It's an echo chamber. It's an echo chamber. But, and yeah, you're right. People are free to believe whatever they want to believe, of course. I mean, you know. But if you expect other reasonable people to uh, believe in what you believe, then that's a different thing. If you want to actually be intellectual, I used the word last time intellectually honest, and I'm switching that to intellectually rigorous. If you want to be intellectually rigorous, then you should go engage in real research and try to prove what you actually believe, because that would be, you know, the stand up thing to do instead of just engaging in echo chambers or attacking someone that is saying a contrary you know, position. But it's speaking done. of real life, hey, guys, I actually got a role. Drew, I appreciate you a lot for allowing me to be on here as always. I'm always open to have any of these conversations with anyone who's uh, not a psychopathic, crazy person who wants to just have an honest chat. I'm going to be running more uh, live streams on my own channel in a year with books. And anyone is welcome to come over there and shoot the shit with me about this or anything else they would like and i appreciate you two gentlemen it was nice to meet you be smiley and i'm i'm down to talk about all this stuff again whenever you'd like to drew absolutely right, man it's good to meet you brother all right cool guys peace out have a good have night a, have a good night yeah um
That was Austin at in a yurt with books. That's where I'm going with it too. More of what kind of where he went is like the psychological side, especially with like the errands and stuff. To me, that's way more interesting is like if you can figure out like why it's happening. Not instead of not instead of what happened, it's like why are these people believing this? How did this happen? Yeah, it's 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 pretty fascinating to watch. That's the thing. I'm gonna probably continue to watch, and I'll eventually get bored of it. So it, yeah, that's just he, with any anything. If he's really doing this intentionally to start a cult, it, then it's because he read like dark psychology books and knows how to like you exactly what to say to to what type of person to say it to and everything. Absolutely, because he's he, he's no slouch. He, no. he kind of knows what he's doing. But he he still trips up a lot, so that's that's a that's a plus side is that he trips up. It's just his his followers are don't want to see it when it happens. They just ignore the little trip ups. Right. So. Um. You got anything else you wanted to get into? No, man. There's some. There's always shit that I'm that I probably I probably would think about later on. I'm like, damn, I could have said this, but yeah. No, I think we pretty much got it all, man. You guys had it. You and fucking EBT had his number months ago, so you guys already called anything that I'm gonna say. It. You guys already said it. For sure, yeah. we were ahead of the curve. Well, all right, man. Fucking, yeah. Just, shut the stream down. Then I gotta go to bed. <laughs> I've been getting up so it was, lately. It, it was. It was good talking with you, man. Yeah, I need. I need some beats, fam. Oh, bro, my computer. I lost my computer, man. I got, I'm got. i working on getting another computer, but I got. I still got beats, though. Okay, okay Davey Krako. Oh, I know, man. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, All right, no, then, brother, you have it. Is, but whenever you come up on something, hit me up. Yep, yeah, for sure, man. I, we have a good night, brother. All right, you too. Appreciate you. Yep, no, bye. Beat Smiley 3, everyone. Um, How far into the stream am I here? You guys want, let me give you a poll. You want more? Uh, I didn't even get through all the screenshots I wanted to get through of these nuts, man. But you guys see, I guess I don't even have to read them. It's just the most insane shit you've ever read from these people that I've ever read, I guess. Pretty crazy. But yeah, I think uh, I think I'm at a good spot. It. it Yulnar says this is a mid truth podcast. Why? I think that I predicted five years ago with the EBT that the conspiracies would go mainstream and that debunking conspiracies would be the next conspiracy. <laughs> and so I'm five years ahead of everyone else. And now you see EWAR's pivot in there and uh, other channels and people are taking that stance. So that was us five years ago. There's really nothing to it. So when you understand that nothing ever happens, it's project blue balls. I think that's the ultimate rabbit hole. It's just not exciting enough. It's not fantastical. Nothing's going to happen ever as far as, as far as like a nine 11 type event or a JFK type event. I'm sure. Something will eventually happen, but it's like, you know, they're very, very far spaced in time in between, but now your tolerance is so high because of 9-11 like nothing will ever like get you that high again on the doom you know what i mean that's the way i see it so uh i guess that's it bro david Pryor, he says you're not debunking all the things you think you're what am i not debunking what there's nothing's been proven to debunk that's the thing what what's been proven to debunk I would love to hear that. As far as what conspiracies that are out there that there's even any like substance to them, it's it's they're all very vague and basically based on nothing. But I don't want to just sit here and talk to the chat, and I, I don't feel like reading uh, screenshots anymore. So, if you do want to leave that comment, you can leave it in the comment of the video i don't mind admitting if i'm wrong about something but anyway peace out y'all i appreciate your time oh lumi <laughs> lumi with the save right at the end the closer i appreciate you, lumi merry christmas this is merry christmas to everyone else too hopefully i can come live again in the next couple days and I'll work on some prepared videos
So yeah, I appreciate your time. Peace out.